Well, I'm back and I've got a few updates into this Locklet Crafter situation. Welcome to the Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. After Wednesday's live stream where I explained some of my baffling interactions with the people representing the Locklet Crafter product launch, I decided I needed to do a little bit of research into the origins of this company because quite frankly, I did not know much about it. This company literally kind of came out of nowhere a few months ago. And in fact, I don't even know how long their sister company, HTV Rund, has been around. I know a few of you have purchased things from HTV Rund. So I've got quite a few updates to share with you today. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be another doozy of an episode. So buckle up and welcome. So in, I wanna try to do a quick recap of everything that's happened so far. All right, so first of all, a few months ago, I started seeing these, I believe Instagram or Facebook ads for a product that I thought looked like a Cricut dupe to me. This thing looked pretty much like a copy, like a reverse engineered copy of a Cricut maker. And it was called the Locklet Crafter. So this is an electronic cutting machine used by a lot of scrapbookers, people who make things like, uh, you know, em embellished t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. You can do scrapbooking. And um, they're very popular, but obviously, um, you, you all know my history with the Cricut company. Not a huge fan. In fact, I'm kind of running out of companies to try. I'm a Silhouette maybe next on my list. I have no idea. But this company, Locklick, kind of came on the scene announcing a budget-friendly electronic cutting machine that looked pretty much like the Cricut Maker. So they, they announced this product launch, and when I first heard of it, I was like, what is this company? I have no idea what this is. Um, and I was just wondering about the legitimacy of this company. So I'm, you know, I was like, okay. And a few of you had told me, uh, Locklick, so there's two companies. There's Locklick Crafter, which is like sort of the brand new company selling this machine. So let's bring up the website. So they built a basic website. They've got some social media accounts, everything like that. And uh, they started advertising this product. They also have a sister company called HTV Runt. And this company sells a lot of accessories that people were buying for their like Cricut or Silhouette machines. They sold HTV vinyl. They sell other types of scrapbooking accessories. So, uh, and they sell a heat, pr a couple of heat, different heat presses. Their heat presses also look like direct ripoffs of Cricut products, like the Cricut Easy Press. They're just at a much lower uh, price. So uh, I know a lot of you were like, the, yeah, the, the product quality is good. And, uh, you know, we, we really like the products. They're great. But, you know, I was thinking about this. We, nobody really knows much about these companies and who's actually running them. So I've, yeah, so I've been trying to figure out like who are these people. So after Wednesday's live stream, so I'm trying to do kind of a quick recap. I know this is not exactly a quick recap. So I started talking about this product launch and about how, um, you know, I was kind of interested to try it out. I don't know much about it. So the company, the company hired a PR firm. Now the PR firm is out of Miami. So I've been dealing with someone with this uh, agency that's, I believe they have uh, a location in Miami and then I believe it was like something like Guatemala, something like that. So I've been talking to this person. They had reached out to me and said, you know, we'd like you to be involved as an influencer with this launch. We will send you a machine to review. My, as you all know, I have a pretty strict policy on accepting freebies here. If I accept any, product from a company, they have to be completely hands off. They can't tell me what to do or dictate anything. And I don't really, I, I want to try to limit my interactions with the company that's uh, producing these products so that they don't really influence, you know, the way I'm reviewing the product or featuring the product. Now this PR firm agreed to everything. They tried to give me a deadline. Um, so they kind of, they, and this is not uncommon. They will agree to everything and then they'll try to like not follow these terms. So they tried to give me a deadline. I said, no, I never actually got the machine. And I know a few other influencers have gotten their machines. So I was like, well, they probably, and I've, 
I covered the, so I covered the um, Kickstarter of the product. So they, and this is kind of odd to me too. They were crowdfunding on Kickstarter to sell this product. Now, typically when I think of Kickstarter or Indiegogo, I think this is a small startup or like grassroots kind of seed funded thing involving a very small company that is, you know, trying to raise the initial funds to produce something, like whether it be a movie or a product. Um, I don't normally think of Kickstarters being conducted by large companies with plenty of money because I guess the reasoning for Kickstarter is, you know, if someone has a great idea, product, prototype, but they don't have the initial funds to invest in producing the product, Kickstarter, Indiegogo are good ways to do that. So Lockley Crafter had a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter got suspended at first. Uh, and, and I realized too, I had gotten an email from Kickstarter basically saying there was like weird activity on the Kickstarter um, involving like suspicious pledges. So that's why it was suspended. Um, Apparently, the Locklet Crafter people did see my live stream. They did clearly were not a fan of it, and I was thinking that might be why I never got a Locklet Crafter to review, which is totally fine, you know. But at the same time, I talked about this the other day. If um, if they just want influencers who will blow smoke up their ass, I'm not it. So they got to go somewhere else. Totally fine, but I am not. A, I'm not a spokesperson or brand ambassador for Locklet Crafter. Uh, this would have been a, a legitimate review uh, with my honest opinions and the company would have no input into this, uh, this product. So I got an email that I read the other day. Um, so I was initially dealing with uh, this one person with the PR firm. Now the PR firm does not, they, they are not, uh, th this is not Locklet Crafter. Often a company will hire a PR firm to handle different events or product launches. So this PR firm uh, is not, they, one of their, so Locklet Crafter is a client of this PR firm. So I got an email from someone I had not interacted with before named Kimberly. And I'll show you the email if you were not tuning in the other day. Uh, but this email from Kimberly did not sit very well uh, with me and I, I found it very off-putting. So quickly, I will kind of scroll through the email so you can see it and you can see what I was dealing with here. Um, so they finally gave me a reason for the suspension. Now, Locklet, the people associated with Locklet Crafter claim that uh, an unknown third party made multiple fraudulent purchases under the same IP with different accounts, triggering Kickstarter's action to immediately cancel the project we have no knowledge of the third party and we have no way to reverse Kickstarter's decision to take precautionary measures and protect their platform. If that's true, fine. So Lockla Crafter then moved over to Indiegogo. So anyone who participated in the initial Kickstarter, um, that was just void. So, um, I actually, so I actually did purchase the product on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So I did that, uh, but what didn't sit well with me uh, notice, okay, so first notice in this initial email, this person who I've never had any contact with before, um, recently I noticed your YouTube video titled Locklet Crafter Kickstarter Suspended. The views for this video are quite impressive. However, we still need to bring more clarity to this issue. Who's we? Like, I'm not, I don't work for these people. So I have no obligation uh, to get talking points from them and parrot it like a, some sort of hostage video. That's not what I do here. Then at the end, she says this, recently some clients saw your video and questioned our campaign and even though we explained the whole thing in great detail, people still clung to the preconceived notions they had in mind. I would like to kindly ask you to make a clarifying video explaining why our campaign was suspended on Kickstarter and we will try to provide you with any answers or other supports. Finally, regarding the video title, I would like to ask if it is possible to edit the title. Oh, sorry, this, this uh, random link, this was not in the email. I, I must have accidentally copied and pasted it in there. Finally, regarding the video title, I would like to ask if it is possible to edit the title of your video without mentioning the suspended word. I'm just asking, it's all up to you, and I hope I'm not bothering you and making these requests. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. 
Uh, yeah, that's a hard, I, I kind of got a little spicy on the last stream, and I colorfully told Kimberly my answer was no. Uh, if you want to read this, this was my response back to Kim, Kimberly. Uh, I said no. I also kind of called them out on the fact that I noticed that they'd sent other influencers a machine to review and not me. And I was just wondering, like, you know, asking them, you know, what's up with that? Because that was pretty weird. And then I did initially offer them the chance if they wanted to do... So I initially offered them a chance to have someone do an on-camera. It would have to be an on-camera interview uh, with a company representative. So... You, I'm going to leave this up for a minute so you can read this. I have actually heard back. I, I got it. So I noticed they didn't write back all day. They sent this out Wednesday morning. I did the stream Wednesday night. Did not hear back from them at all. I'm going to guess uh, the Locklet Crafter people have seen Wednesday's live stream uh, because, and I'll show you this, I just got this new email this morning, and I want to bring this to you because it is a really fantastic email. So that was my response. This is, uh, and notice, um, I think it's very clear. I want to point out, it's very clear. Whoever's writing these emails, when I had been corresponding with quote unquote Maria with the PR firm, it sounded like someone who had a pretty good grasp on the English language. Whoever is writing, and I don't even know if this is Kimber, I could be being catfished. I have no idea. Whoever is writing these emails to me is clearly not a native English speaker. So I don't, I feel like this person is definitely in someone overseas. So this is the email I woke up to this morning. All right, it said, sorry, I got split up. Hi, Jennifer, I'm sorry to get back to you so late. The Locklet Crafter will include the blade and pen and other functions will be implemented, implemented in the second generation machine samples. So it looks like they are planning to do uh, a new iteration sometime with more functions. So maybe it has more of the functionality of the Cricut Maker, like with like a rotary blade or an engraving blade or something like that. I'm glad that you also purchased a machine on Kickstarter and I'm, ha I'm happy with your action of support. Oh, and I have an update on that because I got a refund from Indiegogo. So I'm no longer getting this product. For the logistics delay, I also need to do some explanations since our auto heat press are selling well in various regions. The, the factory production capacity has not kept up, so we have only sent a few cutting machines to the influencers who reserved them in advance. Yeah, I'm not buying that at all. Like, re reserved them in advance? I reserved mine in advance. I don't understand that at all. I feel like she's trying to cover her ass. I don't, I just, I don't know if she thinks I'm dumb or something, but I don't, I don't believe really anything in this email. We will upgrade our production capacity to ensure that the products are delivered to the customer's home in time. We will definitely send you a locklet crafter with our brand's custom, special custom macaroon color. However, the time is uncertain. First, we need to complete the huge demand for auto heat presses and then produce the customized versions of locklet crafter. I believe you are a very sincere and capable YouTuber that care about your audience and I have full respect for you. If you want to review our heat press, I'm happy to send you one unit with lots of best-selling vinyls ASAP. For the camera interview, I need you to give me a list of questions so I can consult with the product manager and ask him if I can participate in the interview. Hope you have a lovely day. Yours, Kimberly. All right, so this is all I wrote back to Kimberly, and I'm pretty much done with these people. Kimberly, I am no longer comfortable promoting the Locklet Crafter brand or with corresponding with anyone associated with the company and have requested a refund on Indiegogo. Please do not contact me further or send anything to my address. So I want to, wow, I just want to say, wow, these people sound, this second email was, in my opinion, almost worse than the first. I think it's super sketchy. When she asked me to send them a list of interview questions first, um, that's a huge no-no and a big red flag. Uh, I, was, I was a former news producer. I've worked at many reputable media organizations and no reputable media outlet would give an interview subject the questions ahead of time. If they are doing that, that's a fraudulent interview. That's not a real interview because 
Interviews are supposed to be candid and the subject is not supposed to know what you are going to ask them ahead of time because that gives them a chance to stage their questions and script everything out. So that is not a legitimate interview if you provide questions to a subject beforehand. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I, I'm comfortable, you know, when I've interviewed people, I will give them like topics we're going to cover. I'm gonna, just going to say, look, I just want to know more about like your background, you know, why you decided to start sewing and more about your business. But it is not common or an accepted practice at all in journalism to give an interview subjects the question ahead of time. So yeah, that's a no. And uh, the fact that she had to like consult to see if she can participate in the interview. Yeah, that sounds that sounds super sketchy. Like I'm just not. I am not, I feel like if at this point, if I did do an on-camera interview with anyone from Locklet Crafter, I, I don't really think it would be valuable to you as a viewer because I don't think this would be a genuine interview and I feel like this would just be propaganda for this company and not, act, you know, and not an actual um, conversation. So that was really, that was really strange to me. So um, Kimberly, if you're watching this, the answer is no. Uh, and I would never give somebody the questions ahead of time. So that's not what this is. It also wouldn't be like a puff interview where I only ask you like nice stuff. Um, you probably would not want to do this interview because I would definitely ask you more about the origins of this company. So after Wednesday's stream, um, so that's kind of where I'm at with the Locklick people. I'm absolutely not going to be featuring this product on the channel. I'm not comfortable with it. And uh, yeah, and in fact, I want to go ahead and say this. I feel personally responsible for anyone who found out about the product through my social media platforms because I, I know I brought a lot of attention to this company and I feel, I feel personally responsible for not doing this research sooner. So I would like to apologize to all of you if you did learn about the Locklet Crafter from the sewing report and you went ahead and purchased it. I also want to share that you absolutely can uh, go on Indiegogo right now and if you if you learning this information, you no longer want to support this company, you can get a refund on Indiegogo and I've already done that. So I am no longer a paying customer of the Locklet Crafter and I will not be I will not be participating in anything involving them. I'm just not I'm absolutely not comfortable with this and I just yeah, I, I just think there's too many red flags uh, that I've gotten from my interactions with this company that I'm just absolutely not comfortable with working with anyone associated with it. So the other day too, um, one of the viewers recommended I watch um, these videos done by an Asian woman named Kimberly. So I'm wondering, is this the Kimberly I've been talking to? I, I could be talking to a dude for all I know. I literally don't know. Uh, so they recommended I check out these videos, like their Locklet Crafter product videos. And this is a little strange to me. So there's a few videos that popped up on this random YouTube channel called Smartphone Fan. Now, I want to ask you a question. Does this look like a, does this look like a crafting company, a crafting channel to you or anything run by a crafter? It's called Smartphone Fan and all they're doing is doing like product unboxings and features of these random, uh, mostly Chinese products and they're like not, they're kind of off brands. So they are, yeah. And notice there's these like uh, two random Locklet Crafter test videos uh, done by an Asian woman. So I did watch a little bit of it and this, this woman in the video is clearly not in a Western country. She's somewhere in Asia. I'm going to guess China. I, I'm not sure. I, again, I cannot confirm that. She does not speak native English. The production value also to me seems very similar as uh, what was posted on Locklick's official YouTube. So Locklick does have a couple of random YouTube channels. But like, I find this channel kind of weird. So if you go to the about section here, all it says is like, like, okay, yeah, this is definitely Chinese. So it's like Weibo. This is definitely Helene1682002 at gmail.com. 
this is clearly a Chinese, what I believe is a Chinese run YouTube channel. And I'm gonna guess, so I did some research on the parent company of Locklet Crafter and HTV Run. Uh, and I believe that the parent company also runs this YouTube channel, Smartphone Fan. And I believe, but this is again, this is my personal opinion, not a confirmed fact. I believe that this woman who says her name is Kimberly in these videos, I believe she works for the parent company for uh, Locklet Craft or HTV Run and all of these companies. Uh, so the weird thing too is that she never dis so if she's working for Locklet Crafter, she never discloses this in any of the videos. So you, I feel like she's trying to come across like she's just a regular consumer that loves this product. But if she is working for Locklet Crafter and she's a company representative, I feel like it's a bit sketchy for her to not disclose that in any of the videos. So like if you click on it. All right, yeah, and I also find it strange that Jennifer Lopez, a side note, Jennifer Lopez is a, a coach spokesperson now. Uh, yeah. So if you look at these descriptions, like notice it's just linking to all of the uh, the HTV Runt stuff and like Locklick. So this to me comes across like this is a company video, but it's posted on a channel that's, a channel that's like trying to portray itself as just like some small YouTube channel, but it's not really what it is. Uh, so that's cut. That was definitely a weird. I felt like that was a weird. That's definitely pretty strange. And then when I looked at the um, videos on the actual Locklick, here, let's go to it. I looked. I found the Locklick YouTube channel. Sorry. In the other room, my rabbit is like running around, so it sounds kind of funny. So, and I also want to point out, if you just search for Locklet Crafter in YouTube, my videos come up, and I'm guessing they probably don't like that either. And also here is today's stream. So, okay, so a couple influencers, they clear, so again, they've clearly sent review units of the Locklet Crafter uh, to other influencers. Here's that weird video on Smartphone Fan, and she says her name is Kimberly. So on the Locklick official YouTube channel, there's one video with, uh, there's only one video with someone on camera, and I noticed the production value in like the set, to me looks kind of the same caliber as the videos on Smartphone Fan. So I feel like they were produced by maybe the same people and maybe in the same location. And this is featuring a different on-air personality, um, AKA allegedly, her name is uh, is Monica. Now are these, are their names really uh, Monica and Kimberly? I, I have some doubts about that. I know in Asia, it is very popular for Asians to have an, like their Korean name or their Japanese name or their Chinese name and also an English name so they can interact with Westerners, uh, you know, like, people might feel like, uh, I, I feel like they're trying to give more an air that they like fit in with the Western culture by having an English name. Now, I was born in Asia myself. Obviously, I'm cool with Asian people. I was born in Asia. Uh, but my name is actually, my, my, I go by Jennifer. My name is really Jennifer. I don't really feel like I, I, I'm gonna guess Monica and Kimberly, I, I'm gonna guess that's not their actual name. So, there's a lot of strangeness going on with this whole situation. So, let's go back to the uh, Locklick website here. All right, so after Wednesday stream, I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta do some more research and dig into like, who actually owns these companies? Who is running these companies? Where are they? We. I just feel like there's a lot of mystery surrounding them. Okay, so if you scroll way down to the bottom of the website, here, and I'll put myself back up here. Hold on a second. Let me see. Sorry, my mouse here is like really wacky here. Okay, so if you scroll way down, you can see about Locklick. So like, again, so it has this like Seiju Co. Limited, about Locklick. So if you go to about Locklick, they've got a brand story. Herman, the founder of Lock, who, the F is that? Like, 
like, so they try to come up. I feel like they try. I feel like whoever is behind these companies is trying to make it look like there's some sort of like passionate about crafting person, small business, small startup or something. Uh, but what I found is this is not some sort of, this is definitely not some type of like small startup or like homegrown operation. All right. Oh, wait, they have changed some stuff. Huh. Okay, so this is interesting. So notice they've got some like emails like support at lock, like Haley at lock, like Abraham. I don't know who these people are. But all right, so I let's go to, yeah, I have no idea who Herman is, Miss Maddie. All right, so let's go to the HTV Rump website. I'm wondering if they're going to change some of their information. So sort of like established titles did after uh, Scott Schaefer did his expose video. Okay, so we're now at the HTV Rump website. So let's look at the About Us section here. So notice it says parent company, Seeky Eagle Sarl, and the address is somewhere in Virbon, France. Now, I decided to Google this company, Seeky Eagle Sarl. Allegedly, you know, again, they are headquartered in France, but the vibe I'm getting is that, you know how here in America, companies will incorporate in Delaware, but they're really not in Delaware. They may have like a P.O. box there or something. But for tax and business purposes, they're headquartered in Delaware, even though they're really in like California. I believe there's something similar going on here. All right, so here's what I found out through like 30 minutes of Googling. Seeky Eagle Sarl, the parent company of France, uh, they definitely have ties in at least Hong Kong and China because many of these websites... So Seeky Eagle Sarl runs and owns at least 27 random e-commerce websites selling anything under the sun. So this is not a crafting dedicated company. This is not a small company for sure. And it appears to me from my research that they just pop up these random websites, sell what they can, and then they start more websites to sell whatever they think they can make money on. So. I put this information all in the description box. I'm also, after this live stream, I, I will be doing a blog post to share um, that I'll be putting all this information with. But if you click on any of these websites and look at the bottom, their about section, they're all owned by this Seeky Eagle Sarl company. Sometimes there's like a like a co-company, like they're, they have like a, you know, like they're both like co-owned and operated. And a lot of, a lot of the locations were also in China or like Hong Kong. So I, do I believe the people who are running this company are French? Absolutely not. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think the people who own and operate these companies are French. I believe they're Asian and I believe just from all of the information I found, I believe they're probably in China. So that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. So let's, let's click on some of these websites and see what else they are selling besides just crafting supplies. Okay, this first website is called 33,000feet.com. Notice, and notice, I feel like the websites are designed so that you feel like they're an American or like a Western company, but clearly they're not. So this company sells like outerwear and stuff like that. Probably, and it, it's probably all, I'm gonna, let's look on some of the product listings. I'm gonna guess most of these products are made in China or an Asian company like Taiwan, you know, Taiwan or Hong Kong, something like that. But notice like they, notice like the models they're using, uh, the photography, they use a lot of like white, you know, people who are clearly not Asian. They're not using Asian people in their marketing. That is for sure. Like this girl does probably does not live in China or wherever they are. Notice like they're very like, like they sell a lot of like mass produced goods, like fast fashion, random crap. Notice it says imported, doesn't say where it's made. And then down at the bottom, if you go to any of these websites and go to the about me section, notice company Seeky Eagle Sarl France. But it's also co-owned by like this, whatever this fashion flying group is. So I find this pretty questionable. And literally, they probably operate more than 27 e-commerce sites. These are just the ones that I was able to find through a Google search. 
there's probably a lot more. All right, so let's go to some of these other ones. Let's see what else they sell. This is keychron.com. They sell uh, computer keyboards. So again, notice the, notice the marketing and the branding on these websites. I personally feel like this is a bit deceptive. Again, not that like a bunch of other companies don't do the same thing, but notice they're trying to come across as some sort of like, Engl like like it's like in an English speaking company or like in some sort of European or uh, Western company. This is, but if you again, you go to the bottom, you go to about us. Okay, and yeah, notice they all like a group of keyboard enthusiasts. Like, how do we know that? Like, okay, notice Zen Zen Zhu. Okay, that's definitely an Asian person. Registered as Seeky Eagle Sarl. And they also have a Hong Kong company address. So again, let's look at some more. I could go through this all day. Also, they have one website. A couple of them were pretty uh, comical. They, they had one where it sells, mili they literally sell military gear. All right, so militaryharbor.com is operated by the same people as Locklet Crafter. What does that tell you? They sell German military style uniforms, USA and allies, Japanese, PLA gears, modern gears. So, yeah. Do you find this a little sketchy? I just want to know, what do you think about this? Like, did you, I'm sure you probably didn't assume it was like, what do you think knowing that this same Shell, you know, company has a bunch of shell companies underneath it operating these random e-commerce websites. Again, these are, I checked every single one of these websites myself. They are all, oh, and the only thing I could find about Seeky Eagle Sarl was this random credit safe credit report. That's it. They don't have a web, they, Seeky Eagle Sarl does not have a website. They do not have an official social media presence. You can't find out like any sort of leadership team. I we have literally no idea who is actually getting the money from the sale of these products. We literally have no idea. So that's what I want to share with you today is just that, it, yeah, the My Spotify plaque is funny because it's like, you can get like custom made plaques of your favorite song, but no, notice how they're intentionally branding and marketing these products. I just want to point that out. Up, you'll up, also, you're giving these people your data, too. So you're giving these people your email information, your home address, your payment information, your, um, you know, your credit card. Like, you're giving these companies a lot of your data. So that's why I really wanted to not just do, like, a community post on YouTube, but a live stream to just really get into all of this because I just find this very, very strange. Again, notice they have like, notice they try to make it, they, they try to give these people like a home, all these companies like a homegrown backstory. Music gives us power, blah, blah. And they probably hired some like Western um, advertising and marketing firms like they did with the Lockley Crafter so that they can try to fit in with um, appearing to be like a Western brand. But again, they operate, they run and operate at least 27 different e-commerce websites selling random crap. All right, so let's look at the uh, contact us section. Once again, yeah, this is a weird one, but I, this did have Seeky Eagle Searle in it somewhere because I remember seeing it. Yeah, this is a weird, okay, notice it's Hong Kong. I gotta find it because this step, this also def, and I only listed the websites that I specifically found Seeky Eagle Sorrel somewhere on the website. All right, I might be missing it. Yeah, this is a weird, very weird formatting here. But notice, I want to ask you. I'm not necessarily accusing Lockley Crafter and HTV Runt of hiding this information because it is technically on their website, but they're not exactly volunteering this information to you. Uh, so I just want to point out that 
I, I personally feel like the marketing behind these products, yeah, has been I has been a bit a bit a bit questionable. They're not telling you, hey, our parent company is this. We also own 27 e-commerce websites. They're not really doing that. So I I feel like this company is just they saw a demographic and crafters and they want to sell stuff to crafters. That's what I think is the end goal. I don't think the people behind these companies are passionate about crafting or like care about crafting. And the vibe I was getting from Monica and Kimberly in those demonstration videos, they're they're not crafters. These are people that were like taught to use the product, but I am not getting the vibe that either Kimberly or Monica if that's their real names which I don't think they are. These are these people in the videos are not crafters. And this explains a lot about their initial metaverse announcement that where they didn't use real people in it, they used avatars on that weird Facebook live stream. If these people are all in China or, or wherever and they don't, they're not native English speakers, that would really explain a lot as to why they didn't want to have a bunch of people with their faces shown um, if, you know, if, if they're all, you know, overseas somewhere. So that would make a lot of sense as to why they chose to do that metaverse announcement where they don't have, where again, you don't see anybody's face. And that also explains to me why they're really, really pushing for influencer marketing because they want us to market the product. I'm a wet, you know, I'm a native, you know, I'm a native English speaker and they wanted people like me and people like the other people they sent the product to market the, um, these Lockley crafters because they feel like those people would, you know, again, if other crafters saw like, oh, well, Jenny down the street uses the Locklet crafter, you know, it must be cool. I feel like they, I feel like that was the whole strategy in trying to push, because I noticed on m the vast majority of the websites listed with Seeky Eagle Sarl as the parent company, they were all like, they all had like affiliate programs and they all had like, you know, influence, they all they like influencer, they're all, trying to reach out to influencers in whatever niche they're trying to sell in to try to get us to do all of the advertising for them. And I just want to say on the record right now, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to just get talking points from Locklet Crafter and read them like I'm some sort of damn hostage video or something like, which honestly, those videos kind of look like, notice the resemblance between like a hostage video and a, these Locklet Crafter videos done by company representatives. They're very strange. Like, I just find them very odd. So, all right, let's look at a few other websites. Let's see what else. Yeah, this definitely had this My Spotify plaque. The formatting was weird, but yeah, I do remember somewhere in the contact us, there was a Seeky Eagle Sarl. I'm trying to find it. Unless they removed it, I don't know. But this whole thing was like, Super, super, oh, maybe it was in the frequently asked questions. I just find all of these companies very odd and I am not, I'm not interested in being part of this. All right, let's look at some other websites. Oh, they also sold um, wigs that are clearly marketed to black women, which I found kind of offensive. Let me see if I can find, I might have been craft. Yeah, check this out, guys. Okay, no, these are, this is, this company is operated by what I believe is Asian people. Notice the marketing on this one. Okay, there was another one that was worse. Okay, I don't think this was the website. Where I felt like they were trying to uh, give this website the vibe like it was like, like a black owned company and it was clearly not. Let me try to find this. All right, so you can, all right, so if I click on these, you can quickly see they sell like workout equir equipment. There was one that sold like dehumidifiers and like air purifiers. That was this one. Nothing but label. Okay, this one sells like home theater equipment. Mattresses, that's what the, so this company is in quite, oh, this is like knockoff Legos. So this company is in quite a few different uh, markets. I'll just say that, cheap faves. Yeah, there was definitely one website where, 
I, yeah. Lots of like very random stuff. I'm trying to find that one where I was like, what the heck? Oh yeah, they sell like jewelry. You can get jewelry. Car seat covers. Maybe this was the wig one. Okay, I think this might have been the wig one. Okay, so again, I want you to keep in mind, this website is owned and operated by Seeky Eagle Sarl, a company that's uh, officially headquartered in France, but uh, I'm gonna guess is probably run by a bunch of people in Asia. Notice who they're marketing to here. I just straight up found this one to be offensive. <laughs> So they hired these people like to be the models or whatever for these products. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is clearly selling uh, wigs to a certain demographic of people. All right, let's look at the about section on this one. Like, and notice like they kind of, again, notice Seeky Eagle Sarl. I'm gonna guess these wigs are all made in Asia. And they all, they try to give them like some sort of legit backstory, but like, I think the reason they're doing all these e-commerce websites is because they just are trying to sell these products because they think they'll sell. Um, so that's my opinion. I believe they're just selling whatever they think will, they, they can get a customer for. Uh, I, do I really feel like this Seeky Eagle Sorrow, Com Sorrow Company is passionate about wigs, air purifiers, crafting machines? military gear, Spotify plaques. Do I really think that that's something they're passionate about or that they have like a, you know, they're trying to make the world a better place? Probably not. I think they're just doing this because uh, they see, they see a, a business opportunity and they are capitalizing on that. So I personally do not feel like this company is something I want to be involved in. So I'm certainly not going to be doing that. And that's why I wanted to share this information with you. But yeah, click on any of those links down in the description box. Look at the about section and you will see them all connected to this parent company, Seeky Eagle Star, which is very mysterious because again, I have not been able to find any person associated with Seeky Eagle Star officially. Like they don't have a website with their board of directors on it or CEO or anything. Um, so I am, I'm just really wondering when if you give money to Locklet Crafter and HTV Runt, where is it really going? We have no idea. And that's not to say that other companies don't do this because this is totally rampant all over Amazon. I was telling you the other day that most of the emails I get for me to get products are all from these random overseas Asian um, Amazon sellers. So I, I imagine it's something very similar to this. So for this Seeky Eagle Sorrow Company, there's probably a thousand of them. So this is probably not the only one. This is just the one that's affecting our community because we do crafting and they're trying to market to us. Um, the other question I would have is if this is a, this is clearly not a small operation, why are they using Kickstarter and Indiegogo if, this, if they also, if they own and operate at least 27 different e-commerce websites? Is it to give the appearance that they're a small startup? Uh, I have no idea, but it seems like a company that has 20, at least 27 different businesses could be able to front the cost of producing items like this. So I, I just find knowing all of this and also knowing that they were using Kickstarter and Indiegogo to raise money for these products to me is super suspect. Like, I just don't, I don't know. So that's what I've learned about the uh, Locklick Crafter Company and HTV Runt. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna touch this one. Um, and I would also officially on the record say, because again, I do, I literally do not know who is, which individuals specifically are really behind these companies. This is a little freaky for me. I'm going to be real with you. For one, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to China now. Like, ever. I, I will never step... Not that I was planning to, but um, after all of this, and them now know who, knowing who I am, uh, there's no way in hell 
I would ever risk uh, visiting China. Also, for the record, I would like to state just just in case anything weird happens over the next few years, I am a uh, perfectly healthy individual. Things in my life are going well right now, and there is no reason, absolutely no reason, for me to Jeffrey Epstein myself. So I will just put that out there because I don't know, I really don't know who I'm dealing with at the top of this food chain here. So just learning more about this, I'm a li- I honestly, like the more I think about it, the more freaked out I get. So, uh, yeah, so I just want to put that out there that uh, it should anything strange happen on the record, I would just like to state that people should probably look more into it because I, I'm a healthy individual. Nothing's going, you know, I don't have any reason not to live. Uh, so I will just say that because, again, I don't know who these people are. Uh, I'm like a little freaked out by this all. And... Uh, they they clearly do not like me doing these types of videos and live streams, um, so I don't really know. I, I'm not really sure what the risk level is here, but I'm going to guess it's moderately high, especially knowing what we do know about the Chinese government. So I'm just going to put that out there. I you know this is not meant to be a political statement, but uh, let, let's be real. We 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 know what's going on in certain parts of the world, and I feel like being you know, with me living in the United States, we are in a bit of a bubble here, let's be honest, uh, because the types of freedom we have here, uh, other people around the world do not have. So I'm fully aware of that, uh, but also we don't really know, yeah, I don't, you know, we don't know who is involved in this, but everything around this company, I, there's just too many red flags about this business, these businesses. Uh, so yeah, I am not going to be, I I am not going to be, uh, associated in any way, shape or form with HTV Runt and Lockley Crafter. And in fact, you know, this has really motivated me if I'm featuring any product, you know, again, I know it's very hard because if you're shopping on Amazon, which I do a lot, you generally don't know who the money is going to if it's one of those random overseas Amazon sellers. You truly don't. Uh, so I could be giving my, I mean, I could be giving my money to fund who knows what. Uh, so that's, it, I feel like I really want to try to do more due diligence in the future about the products I'm talking about because this is, this is all very freaky and weird. Uh, so that is uh, the latest on the Locklet Crafter and the HTV Runt uh, front. Uh, let's read some comments. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome everyone watching. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Nancy. Yeah. So this is pretty weird, but, um, yeah, all of those websites listed in the description box, they're all owned and run by the same, uh, parent company in France. But again, we really don't know who is actually the one running the show here. Like, again, I've not been able to find out much about this, much about the people behind these companies. So I really have no idea, but I am not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with, with doing anything with this company or whatever. So, um, okay, Sharon, to me, this sounds a lot like the Theranos scandal. scandal. Do you know any of the influencers? Are they real? Is this machine actually real? I personally don't know any of the other people who have been reviewing this machine. So, and you know what? I, I don't necessarily fault the American influencers who did because, again, most people just don't really look into stuff like that. They're like, oh, cool, it's a product. I just want to do this because I'm like, yeah, this is, this is very weird. This is very strange. Oh, um, and I do, I do want to talk about... Um, the YouTube scandal with the kind of a similar situation. There was a company called Established Titles that was allegedly selling you like one square foot of land in Scotland so you could get the official title Lord or Lady or Laird. And um, there, I want to talk a little bit about a little bit about that too because um, the guy who did the video exposing 
the people behind the established title company, he's getting threatened. Uh, so I just find that really strange. Uh, so that's why I wanted to make that disclaimer that I am a happy, healthy person, and uh, there's really no reason for me to, uh, you know, do anything weird. So, all right, thank you, Tiffany Stitchery. I was, thanks for all the research you've done. I was interested in this product, but now we'll stay far away from it. And that's what I'm doing, and that's why I wanted to update you to tell you that I am no longer going to be buying this. Uh, you can go on Indiegogo. If you go to the campaign, like your account, you can cancel it. So you can, you can uh, opt out of it, and then you will get a refund. So if you don't want to do this, and again, if you do, go ahead. Like if you want to try the product out, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do what you feel is best, but I wanted to present this information just so that you have more, so that you're armed with more resources and information and you have your eyes wide open knowing, you know, where your, where your money is going, which you really don't know where your money is going because this company is very strange. I'm glad Kickstarter and Indiegogo were able to see what was going on. So Indiegogo, Nancy, that campaign is still going on. So uh, they're still active on Indiegogo. So they are preying on the fact that lots of folks like to support small startups. That's my vibe too, is that I felt like they wanted to do Kickstarter and Indiegogo for a couple reasons. Uh, one, so that they didn't have to front all of the money for production. They're going to get your money early so that they can pay for the production of these machines. And two, I, I do think there was some aspect into it so they can feel like uh, they can give the vibe that there's some sort of small operation out of somebody's garage type of vibe. And they know that people use and like Kickstarter and Indiegogo a lot. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, um, so let me talk to you about this established titles thing. Uh, so I addressed this in the last live stream. If you want to go ahead and watch that, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, but there is a gentleman on YouTube. I've been watching his channel for a while. And his name is Scott Schaefer. And he kind of exposes, uh, he kind of exposes like various YouTube stuff. He actually does, to his credit though, I know a lot of people think he's like riding the coattails of big YouTubers. And I mean, yeah, that's fair criticism. But at the same time, this guy actually has been doing his homework as far as getting uh, the news gathering. So as a former news producer, Scott Schaefer, I respect your uh, research because he does actually get legitimate information. So he did a video a couple days ago about established titles, which was being promoted by tons and tons of other YouTubers. Like established titles got like some of the biggest channels on YouTube as a sponsor. And Scott found out that basically established titles is not legitimate. Like you're not actually a lord or a lady if you get this thing. You're basically paying 40 bucks for a piece of paper that says you're a lord or a lady, but you're not in any way an actual lord or lady. This company was also claiming they planted trees uh, for every title you bought, um, but they didn't really tell you what organization they were supporting or anything like that. So Scott found out that this, it was the same thing. It was like a Chinese company that was uh, trying to sell you land in Scotland. Tell me, how does that make sense? The other, so Scott did the video. It obviously got a lot of uh, eyeballs because it has 2.5 million views. A lot of YouTubers now in response have dropped their sponsorship with established titles. They were getting paid a shitload of money. Like I heard it was like $20,000 a month to do ad reads for established titles. I mean, I understand that could be, that's a lot of money and that can be very lucrative. Um, but yeah, like this is clearly like a gag gift, but I looked at the established titles website because my husband and I almost fell for this scam. We really did. We were like, okay, that sounds funny. Uh, but I felt like the website was not super clear that it was a gag gift. Like if they were like, this is not at all legitimate and you know, this is just for fun. That's one thing, but the company website on established titles did not make that clear at all. And I felt that too, because, and I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like a, you know, totally gullible person, but yeah, there was really nothing on the website to indicate that it was just a gag gift. And after Scott's video came out, um, established titles changed a lot of things on their website to make Scott look bad. 
So they're like, oh no, it really says this on the website, but you can actually, if you use like the Wayback Machine thing, you can, you can see if companies have changed their websites or changed articles, and they clearly made a lot of significant changes to the established titles website um, in light of the video to make themselves look better. Um, the, the other thing that was pretty weird is that, um, Scott, is that uh, some of the YouTubers that were sponsored by established titles, uh, then they did attack videos about Scott and accusing him of being a racist, which is crazy because I watched the video, there was nothing racist in the video, and I'm Asian. Um, he did point out that it was a little weird for a like Chinese company to be selling land in Scotland, and I feel like that's very relevant information. So he found this company executive that was an Asian woman. But wouldn't you find it a little strange that an Asian woman who, has, who does not live in Scotland is trying to sell you land in Scotland? I would find that a little strange, and I do. So some of these YouTubers have been trying to destroy Scott's reputation by claiming he's a racist when he did not say anything remotely racist in the video. So they're just trying to destroy his credibility. And people have done this before. He also um, made a follow-up video. I would encourage you to watch both of these videos because they are pretty interesting. Um, and he goes into how he is now being attacked by some of the established titles, um, you know, sponsor the YouTubers who were sponsored by them uh, because they're very, they're obviously very upset that Scott, um, you know, Scott ruined their bags. So, hey. But, you know, at the same time, that's what they get for repping a company that is clearly a total scam. Uh, so thank you to Scott Schaefer for doing the work he does. Uh, you know, I know not ever, you know, not everyone's a fan, but hey, you don't have to be. He has done a lot of videos. He also exposed, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, there was a, a channel that blew up like a few months ago where a woman was living in a van and it's called Our All In with Ari. And it's like, I'm homeless now and living in my car. And it turned out like, there's a lot about this woman that is also questionable and she also got very mad at uh, obviously he's not a fan of meet kevin or graham stefan or a lot of these uh financial youtubers um so it turned out this all in with ari lady she's not a apparently she's like not actually homeless she is a convicted criminal so she has criminal convictions on her record and uh she is also she also is a child that she apparently does not have custody of so there's a lot of questions you could ask Ari, for sure. And uh, yeah, so he's got a few videos, but you know, again, to his credit, yes, these videos seem very clickbaity and sensational, but he actually does uncover real information. He goes straight to the source, he gets mug shots, he gets police reports. He actually got like dash cam video of Meet Kevin being arrested in Tampa, where I am. And I had no idea Meet Kevin was arrested in Tampa. Also, funny story, I actually met Meet Kevin in person, and I have a photo with him. I got a, I got a, I got a chance to meet Meet Kevin a couple days after he was arrested in Tampa, Florida. I had no idea he'd been arrested. Um, he was pretty nice to me. To you know, Kevin was pr pretty cool. He took photos, uh, but I thought that was really strange. So, if you would like to learn more about uh, the seedier side of YouTube and influencer marketing. I would highly recommend checking out a few of Scott Schaefer's videos because, again, he does actually, like this is not just someone who's reading other news articles or making up stuff. He's actually getting real information and he's going, he's, he's actually doing real news gathering. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, so established titles, it's a very similar situation in that the company, I feel like they're trying to give off a vibe like they're a Scottish company, uh, but they're really owned by some random company in Asia, and it's not for real. So uh, that's the reason I wanted to do this stream was so that you know who, you know, what the deal is, the real deal is with Locklet Crafter and with uh, HTV Runt. I will definitely not be buying any of their products either. But again, I fully realize that it is next to impossible to get away with stuff that is made in some of these countries. You just can't. So I don't know. And if any of these Locklet Crafter want to accuse me of being a racist uh, for pointing this out, go ahead. Good luck with that because I'm Asian too. So uh, if they want to try to do that, you know, go ahead. 
uh, but this has been really bizarre, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about this, but, uh, yeah. All right, Miss Maddie, I've been disappointed with some of my faves promoting them. Always thought it was a gag gift. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think if they were just super upfront about it, that would have been one thing. But finding more about, like, the ownership of this company and then the fact that they're, they seem to be trying to hide all of this does not inspire a lot of uh, confidence. Yeah, check out the Scott Schaefer videos. They were very well done. Um, although I personally had a good experience with Meet Kevin, I also thought those videos were very uh, well researched. And they're not, like, again, his titles and thumbnails are very clickbaity. But the actual content is, has some substance. So, hey, I'm not, I'm not hating on Scott Schaefer. I, I think we need more people out there like that who are doing some research into some of these brands that are just throwing money at YouTubers or influencers, and then they blindly just, uh, you know, been like, yeah, let's get your established title today. You know, and by the way, this is clearly not a sponsored video. Um, oh, there's another thing, too. Um, do you all remember, I think I might have mentioned this I might have kind of mentioned this on the channel before, uh, but do you remember a few years ago when there was that Netflix and I believe a Hulu documentary about the fire festival? Not fire like fire, but fire, F-Y-R-E. Uh, it was supposed to be like this huge Coachella style music festival in the Bahamas. People paid a lot of money to attend this thing. And it turned out that was like, that the whole event was just a total uh, cluster show. Do you all remember that whole thing? I feel like that was kind of, I feel like that's kind of a relatable situation because again, it was marketed as this big glamorous event. They got, they threw money, they raised a ton of money. They hired all of these uh, supermodels and huge influencers. They got Haley Bieber, who was then Haley Baldwin. They got Kendall Jenner. They got uh, Emily Ratajkowski and they flew them down to the Bahamas and, uh, that event and so they got all these big names so that's why companies want to get influencers so they can get this air of credibility and that event turned out to be a flaming dumpster fire well here's an interesting update that guy that was behind it all billy mcfarland remember him from the documentary if you haven't seen that netflix documentary you need to it's a few years old uh, billy mcfarland is now out of prison and he's now trying to like continue the grift so i saw an interview with Billy McFarland and I was like oh my gosh so he's now he's now continuing it looked like he's continuing to try to do some um sort of touristy thing in the Bahamas he also got in trouble in prison um he got in trouble for prison for like a couple different things I forgot exactly what they were one of them was he tried to start a podcast in prison which is against rules so he would like use his prison phone call to try to record this podcast I believe he also got um, reprimanded for having like a phone in prison or something like that. So that whole thing is pretty wild, but I feel like that's become relevant again too because look at all of these other situations that are kind of similar in manner where these rando companies like FTX, Established Title, the Fire Festival, they're basically just throwing money at celebrities and influencers to get them to uh, endorse these things and then these things turn out to be a scam. Uh, so I'm not going to be one of those chumps. I already feel like I've been taken for a ride enough by these companies. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. I am going to be, after this, after I jump off of here, I'm going to be, I am going to be putting this on sewingreport.com with some of this information. I just didn't have time to do the blog post before the live stream. So I will be doing that. And uh, if anyone asks you questions about the Lock Click Crafter or HTV Run, you're welcome to send them links uh, to these live streams so they can learn uh, the truth about these companies. Uh, but yeah, if they send me, if they try to send me a machine, I'm going to return it to sender or whatever. I do not want anything from these people. I do not want to have any contact. I'm sure as hell not letting any of them uh, try to do some propaganda stream or video by giving them any more airtime. So I will not be doing that. In fact, after I wrote that and after I learned those things about the company, I was like, man, I really regret offering that. So I told them no, so that will not be happening. I just feel like there's way too many red flags with uh, these companies. And there's, again, no way in hell I'm going to further help, help them sell more products. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know this is a very 
Kind of another another weird one. Not too much. I don't think I dropped an F-bomb in this one, though. Some of you guys enjoyed that. I d and I think I only lost two subscribers from the last live stream. Uh, so, I, hey, if that was you, I completely, completely understand. Uh, I really hope to do more of these types of videos. Uh, you know, again, I don't feel, I don't feel like there are enough um, people on YouTube doing this type of work. And, um, you know, your mainstream media, your legacy media outlets, they're definitely not covering the Locklet Crafter. Like that's, I think that's something a lot of people don't realize too, is that, you know, everyone's like, go to the media with this or contact, like contact your newspaper. They're not really going to care unless there's something like huge. Like if there's like a multi-billion dollar, you know, theft ring or something strange like that, most media outlets are they just don't have the bandwidth to cover the sewing and crafting industry generally. And even if they do, their coverage isn't going to be very in depth because they just, they just don't have the resources to do that. They literally don't have the resources to do that type of thing. Investigative journalism is becoming harder and harder to come by because there's just less money, you know, and, and the few, like the reporters that currently exist, their workload just keeps increasing. So they really are not able to, they're able to kind of go like an inch, you know, kind of like the inch deep, but a mile wide. They're not able to go deep with a lot of these stories that probably should be investigated just because they're not, you know, they, they just don't have the time to do it because they're, they're expected to do eight stories a day or something. In fact, my old organization, CNN, is apparently having another round of layoffs uh, so that's the state of the journalist, the journalism and news industry. It's not going very well for them. I can see why, but uh, yeah, I would not, I would not uh, count on, I would not count on your legacy corporate media outlets uh, to do any sort of like real investigations into anything. That's probably not going to happen. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did enjoy the stream and uh, you, you know, you want to see more of this. Be sure to hit a you know hit the like on this this video, and also subscribe to the Sewing Report. I do all kinds of videos on sewing and crafting. Sometimes I report on relevant industry news, um, and let me know if you would enjoy seeing more of this type of content because I enjoy doing these. To be frank with you, and you know I'd like to do more. Hopefully, people watch these videos. Uh, but your response really tells me a lot about the interest in these topics. So if I, if I continue to get interest and get people watching these live streams and videos, I will continue doing them. But it is kind of hard since I am, an, again, an independent creator. Um, you know, there is, for us, there is a financial incentive uh, to do what, what gets people watching. So if you like that, I would really appreciate your support here with the work I'm doing. Uh, but I hope you have a great day. It is actually my mom's birthday, and uh, we're going to go over to her house, bring some food, and, uh, and hang out for a little bit. But I just wanted to jump on because I felt like this was a really important update, especially after getting uh, another strange email from Kimberly with Locklet Crafter. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you and also share what I've learned about uh, the companies that are these companies and who, the, who is actually behind it. And the truth is, we, we really don't know. We honestly, I honestly could not find any real information as to who is actually in charge, like who is actually in charge of Locklick, Crafter, and HTV Run, or the parent company, uh, that weird, you know, Sarl, what was it? Seeky Eagle Sarl. I don't even know what that is. So that's it for me today, but I really hope you enjoyed this live stream and uh, let's see here. We've got a couple more comments. Thank you so much for watching. That was super interesting. I always enjoy hanging out with you, Jen. Jamie, right back at you. Are you talking the people who will be selling on Facebook for cheap? I'm not really sure what that means. Talking to people. Yeah, I don't know, don't know what that means. But uh, anyways, I hope you all have a great weekend, and I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I will see you again in the next one. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.